Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. If you've been watching the channel, you know one of my favorite things about breeding boas is the holdbacks. And every year I've been holding back some of my favorite babies of that breeding season. Of course, you can't do this forever and these little babies end up growing larger and larger, requiring more space and resources. So I've come to the difficult decision that I need to move on from certain breeding projects and let them go. So that's just the subject of today's video, letting go of breeding projects and focusing on the ones that bring you the most fulfillment. And this has been on my mind for quite a while, probably the last two or three years, as I've known that my babies are getting bigger and you know, being a person of limited space and time, I just have to let something go so that the other animals will have the, uh, thing, the conditions that they need. And as you know by watching my channel, I have lots of different locality boas and you know, I try to do a lot of different projects, but I'm one person with a limited amount of time and resources. Um, but I've been really soul searching over the last, especially the last year or so, about which of these projects to let go. And so today I just wanna discuss with you guys some of the projects I'm letting go, a little bit about the reasons why and show you some of these adult animals that are for sale right now. And um, this is really hard because I like all my boas. I really aim to you know, enjoy them all and to breed them all. Sometimes things just don't work out and I've been having more success with other types of boas of which I have lots of holdbacks. So it makes sense to put more focus on those other projects and you know, to release some of these um, boas of the of you know the projects that are just not quite as uh, fulfilling to me, and so these animals are all um, basically between 2015 and 2017 born, so they're all somewhere around seven or eight years old. The first pair that I wanted to show you is that I have a pair of these Northern Brazilian two red tail boas. This is the Lemke bloodline bred by Vin Russo. This is the female. Um, the male looks pretty similar to this one. I'm probably not gonna get him out for the video. But really nice looking boas. Uh, they got that really uh, dirty kind of background markings as you might expect from a Northern Brazilian. And I like the Northern Brazilians. Um, I just think that they're kind of a little bit too similar to the Surinams as far as something to hold on to. And as you know, if you've been following the channel, I have basically five main localities of two red tails. I've got my Surinams, my Peruvians, my Venezuelans, my Guyanans, and these North Brazilians. And I, I think in the long term, I'm gonna focus on the Peruvians, the Surinams, and the Venezuelans, just because those three types are just a little bit more distinctive. Whereas these Northern Brazilians, I mean, they're definitely distinctive. They're just not quite as different to me from the Surinams. In fact, I think the Guyana got boas, I'm probably gonna let my pair go as well because they're just too much like the Surinams. And you know, if I had like unlimited amounts of time and space, I'd have everything, but that's just not the case. So these animals are about six feet long. They're quite, uh, she's quite dense. Uh, my arm is kind of getting tired holding her up. But uh, really cool Northern Brazilian boa. The Northern Brazilian boas seem to have a cult following and a lot of people really like these boas. So if you want an adult pair of Northern Brazilian boas or just a male or female, this might be the opportunity for you. I have these animals as well as the other adults that I'm gonna talk about today. You can see them on my Flickr page. The link is below the video description. So if you're possibly interested in checking them out, go to my Flickr page and you can get more information on these Northern Brazilian true red tails. Here's another type of locality boa that I've decided to let go, and this was a really difficult decision. This is a dwarf Paraguana Peninsula boa. This is the wild type form. And this guy was born in 2015, bred by Chris Wolf. This guy is maybe four feet long. He actually ate a rat about two days ago. I found him a large rat. So he's looking a little thick right now. But really, really cool dwarf locality boa. They've got, they're really interesting because they live in the uh, peninsula in Northwest Venezuela. 
and geographically it's kind of in the middle of the range between boa constrictor constrictor to the south and boa imperator to the northwest so they definitely have characteristics of both forms of boas they have this really cool pattern with high contrast this dark red tail they're also super chill one of the best pet boas great to take out and handle i really struggled with you know letting these guys go it took me a while to finally reach the conclusion that it's probably best if I unload this project. I just have too many other dwarf boas with my Qualki, Kakraki, and Tarahimara boas. So unfortunately, or you know, fortunately for you, if you're looking for one of these, this guy's going to be headed to a new home. But great, great animal. This is the male. I also have a female that's about the same size. Maybe the female is probably a little bit bigger but also another really nice boa. And if you're interested in learning more about this guy, you can see the pictures on my Flickr page at the link below the video description. The Paraguana Peninsula boa from Venezuela. That was a wild type Paraguana Peninsula boa from Venezuela. I also have a pair of the anorithristic variant Paraguana Peninsula boas that I am letting go. This is the female. And so you can see her colors, rather than being the browns and reds and yellows, are kind of more of a silvery gray color, since the anorithristics are missing the red and yellow pigment. This one, she's about the same size as the male I just showed you, about four and a half feet long or so. She also ate a rat, a large rat, just a couple days ago, so she's still got kind of a bulge. But uh, really nice boa. As I said, it's been tough for me to reach the conclusion that, uh, you know, to move on from these, focus on some of my other dwarf boas. But this one and a male are available right now if you've been interested in getting into the rare Paraguana Peninsula boa. They make great, great pets, you know, or if you want to add them to a breeding group. Got some really nice animals here. This one was produced by Vin Russo, born in 2016. I'm not sure if I like the wild type or the anorithristic better. They're just both uh, really beautiful animals and great pet for someone that wants a smaller boa that's not going to take up too much space. So if you want to see this one or the male, you can go check out my Flickr page at the link below the video description. One more boa for today's video and this is the last type of boa that I've decided to let go. This is a Bolivian Amaralai boa. This is actually an orange crush bloodline traced back to Joe Terry. You can see that uh, unlike the other, the silverback Amaralai, they have kind of more of a silvery gray color. These guys have this orangish, pinkish magenta color, really quite spectacular looking and breathtaking. Also very, very hard to get. I haven't seen any of these lately. Not sure if anyone's really working with them, but uh, the Bolivian or the Amarale boas in general have a dedicated cult following. They're said to be the most intelligent boa, very responsive to the handler, you know, great boa to take out and enjoy. They're also quite bulky and strong and muscular. They've got these kind of short heads with these kind of big jaw muscles, almost like a pit bull of the boa world, but uh, great boa to work with. And, you know, it's been really tough for me to reach the conclusion to let these guys go. But uh, I just think they would be better off with someone that has more specialized in Amarali and, you know, has a collection of Amarali and really wants to work with the Amarali. So I've got this one. I've also got a female. This pair was born in 2016, bred by Kenneth Proctor from the Joe Terry uh, bloodline, the Orange Crush bloodline. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope that somebody who has these uh, will continue working with them and hopefully continuing to provide animals for the next generation. I often think about some of these locality boa projects and where they're going to be in 10 or 15 years. This guy's kind of not holding still today. Um, where they're going to be in 10 or 15 years, if they're still going to exist in captivity and Hopefully they will, but uh, it's not looking real good for some of them. I'll just leave it at that. But uh, if you want to see this guy and the female I have available, 
check out the link in the video description to see the Flickr page for more photos and other information. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed looking at these adult boas that are now available. If you have any questions about them or any of my boas or any questions about boas in general, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.